Sebastian is a drummer, composer, and arranger from Poland. Uh, I think the town is Brodnica. 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 Uh, he studied at the University of uh, Elmi, Karol... Karol Szymanowski. And uh, uh, he's resident in jazz, hip hop, funk, and pop genres. As a member of the um, Wierbaśni Quintet, uh, he recorded three albums and won the Grand Prize an audience award at the 2010 Gatsby International Jazz Festival in Spain. He has played uh, with greats such as um, names that are, are in your language and it's very hard for me. Uh, maybe, you, uh, <laughs> maybe you can help me here. Wait, let me find it. Uh, Zbigniew Namysłowski, Piotr Wojtasik. And, and uh, it, it's been a pleasure to have him uh, here at the Institute this year. Please yeah. clap for Sebastian. Thank you, Marco, for a wonderful introduction. Uh, thank you all for coming. So my presentation is entitled Polish Folk Jazz Dances. I will be presenting four original, original compositions. These were influenced by different national dances from Poland. Uh, so in general, we have five national dances. That's Kujawiak from Kujawa and Pomerania. It's a region in Poland. Polones, Mazurek from Warsaw, Oberek and Krakowiak from Kraków. <coughs> so this whole idea came in 2016 after three years playing with Zbigniew Namysłowski quintet. Uh, Zbigniew Namysłowski is a uh, very well-known Polish saxophonist. He's an incredible composer and sax player who combined Polish folk with jazz. For instance, he recorded an amazing album uh, called Song of Predoctyl. It was in 1974 with Tony Williams on drums. So he made me understand that knowledge of culture from my own country is important. And he got me interested in looking into music from my own country, Poland. So after that, I start to do some research and I discover a lot of beautiful musical interpretation of Polish dances or uh, music written to be danced to or just influenced by dances. So I noticed that this music is very expressive, which makes it beautiful. So when I got to the master program, Berkeley Global Jazz Institute, I wanted to share this music with everybody here and I decided to compose some of my own interpretations of these dances. So this would make me connect with my, the traditional music from my own country. So I wanted to create a blend of traditional music and contemporary music that are influenced by today. So I want to put every my experience together in this project. Uh, here's a list of my influences from different genres. So my main influences in contemporary music is Jay Dilla, Karim Riggins, Chris Dave. They represent hip hop scene. Jay Dilla is from Detroit, Karim Riggins also from Detroit, Chris Dave from Texas. In jazz, it's Zbigniew Namysłowski, which I remind him. In classical music, amazing Polish composers, well-known, Friedrich Chopin, Henryk Wieniawski, Wojciech Kilar. And folk culture for music, it's a band called Lautari, Zespół Pieśni Tańca, and Polish dance ensembles in Dełowicz. So my first composition is called Kujawiak. Uh, that's the or original composition inspired by Dance Kujawiak and Kujawy, which region where I come from. Uh, so Kujawiak is, Kujawiak in music is without a doubt the most romantic 
of Poland Five National Dances. So popular are their melancholy rhythm and beautiful movements, characteristic in medium slow tempo, minor tonality in free four measure. Mm. So Kujawiak do its slower tempo, many of which come from the central region of Wawic and is therefore mostly performed by Polish dance ensemble in the Wawic. The music is fairly slow. Uh, the dance usually involves couples walking gracefully in quarter notes rhythm on slightly bended knees with relaxed turn and gently swaying. Now I'm going to play example of dance. So be inspired by Kujawiak dance, I create uniformity groove based on every quarter notes, play on snare drum to keep connection with way of dancing Kujawiak. Uh, I also try to find new sound and I use uncommon horn section where I involve flute with bass clarinet, uh, trumpet, alt saxophone and trombone. Also, I put it together uh, three melancholic background vocals. I involve also two percussionists, Fender Rhodes, who imitates Kuyav Lakes, guitar and bass and drums. So this part of my tune is also only on one chord, based on one chord, A minor, to express unif uniformity of Kuyav landscape. There was a Fender Rhodes part simulate lake sounds. We have a landscape where is a lot of beautiful lakes. Uh, so I play along now this part. The next part of this song is in inspired by Henryk Wieniawski and his Kujawiak, which was the first reference to Kujawiak dance, and it was in 1827. He called Kujawiak sleepy and lulling, so his music is often ly lyrical and calm, supposedly representing the Kujawi landscapes, and also usually in a minor key. This is a fragment of Henryk Wieniawski.
So in my composition, I use the same scale and shape of his melody. It's pretty similar melody which I use, but with different rhythm and different harmony. My next composition is Polones. Uh, it is song about most representative dance in Poland, Polones. Uh, Polones is very dignified dance, dance only on the most important occasions in Poland. Polones is always a first dance in Studniówka. It's mean 100 days. So it's the Polish equivalent of the senior prom that occur approximately 100 days before exams. Also in the past, Polones was danced after the quarrel of two tribes by agreement as a proof of our for forgiveness, trust, and reconciliations. So every Polones based on this rhythmical figure uh, on free four. It's like that. Uh, so it's really dignified, iteral, delicate dance. This polonus which I'm going to present is composed by Wojciech Kilar, Polish classical film composer, who composed in 1975 Bogu Rodzica uh, for choir and orchestra. Bogu Rodzica means mother of God. And it's oldest Polish hymn comes from 10th century. So his his polonus. <laughs> So in my composition, I use Polonus rhythm, but I change feeling for 6-8. This transition from 3-4 to 6-8 was inspired by Danilo Ideas based on Abakwa things. So what we work on during program in Global Jazz Institute. So I want to create a similar mood in my composition using rit rhythmical motif playing by piano and I use different long notes in background vocals and horns reflecting a remote of Polonese dance.
so I compose also lyrics. Uh, so because Polones is dancing to Dniówka, where everybody, there are 18 years old, so ly lyrics coming of age, transitioning from teenagers to adult. So lyrics describe moment during dance, moment in which everyone says goodbye to the past and is waiting for an unknown future. So this feeling I wanted to express in this lyrics. It's time. So also in this composition, I used fragment of Kujawiak written by Henry Gwieniawski. That's the second part of the same uh, Kujawiak, where is that? So I can play this. <coughs> So I use the same notes in the different key uh, using kind of augmentation technique and I put this theme in trumpet part in my song. So my next composition is Zydek Tańcuje. Uh, it's composition inspired by Oberek dance. So Oberek is lively Polish dance, is the fastest of the five national dances of Poland. The name Oberek is derived from Obracać się, which means in Polish to spin. It consists of many dance lift and jumps. That is the second most popular dance in Polish American music after the polka. So to, ref to re reflect the dance which I use dance to in the circle, I use ninth, eight meter, which I associate with circle. 
So characteristic is uh, up tempo and free for measure. So a lot of obercas are composed based on minor chromatic scale from uh, fifth degree. Well, we can see like E, F, G sharp, A, B, C, D, E. I'm going to play the dance. So here's fragment of my compositions, where I put the team in unison. And after that is coming ad libitum part, where is vocal improvisation. Next part of this tune is part based on 9-8 bass groove, which remind me circle. <laughs> composition in this presentation is Blaszane Mordy, inspired by Krakowiak dance. So Krakowiak is really fast, syncopated dance, comes from Kraków and from Little Poland. Uh, so from city, from, from place where I was many times, especially in summertime, playing in different festivals there. And it's really touristic, really the most crowded place ever. Uh, I <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of city which never, never sleep. Uh, so my composition express energy of this city. Uh, so I compose interpretation of dance based on Blaszane Morde, that's kind of traditional, uh, traditional old theme. So I'm going to play for you a piece of vocal and drum solo from this tune.
Thank you everybody for listening, for coming. Thank you Danilo Perez for all year. Thank you Marco Pignataro. It was a beautiful year spent here. Thank you all. Sebastian, congratulations. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, can we have the house light on, please? Yes. How much time we have, Mary? Uh, we have about 10-15 minutes. Okay. I would like to acknowledge the president of Jerry Leak here, yeah. please. Yeah. And actually, I think you should start, Jerry. All right, well, this is a remarkable. <laughs> Sebastian was in my world percussion class and also as a private student in the spring semester. And I had the pleasure of hearing all the tracks in their entirety. And I have to say they're remarkable, very impressive. And I'm not just saying for a drummer, speaking as a drummer myself, breaking the mold and getting into composition and arranging you know, you're proving that there, there is no handicap there. So you're really remarkable in, in the sense of how you compose the music and drawing from your traditions. And uh, I particularly love the way you mix the music as well because the, not only this, the where you position the sounds, but mm -hmm. how you give prominence to the voices. Even in that last track, you have a drum solo that's just so percolating, but you are so understated with it that you're not trying to, yeah. you know, shine. You're letting the music speak for it. and. So there's a lot of uh, d delicious taste that goes with the, uh, the arranging that you've contrived and, and all the diversity in the tunes, really fantastic drawing from your tradition, which is the way to go. Every music comes from some sort of core tradition. So really uh, tapping into those roots and creating something fresh and unique that's always evolving and growing. And that's something that I'm, I'm tapping into and I think we all are in, in various respects. So you know, you've created your own museum of sound and time, and I think that's a remarkable path that you're on. Um, I am curious, uh, do you, have you learned the traditional dances by any chance? Are you a... Uh, I, I wish, but... <laughs> no, no, don't be shy, man. I, I ask all this to my <laughs> students. But did you learn, did you draw from any no, inspiration on the movements? No, actually, I play with some traditional yeah. folk dan uh, band, but there was another <laughs> dancers. Right. So we touring together, so uh, I was chance to, to, to yeah. see. I, I understand, and, and as an Af African musician, I've also had to learn to dance, and I realized that that really informed my connection to the music, even if you're about to you know, reinvent it in various uh, configurations. In fact, the first piece uh, is in 3-4 traditionally, but you created it in 4-4. Was, yeah. was, was that an immediate decision or something that you, know, you realized through the shapes of the melodies, there was breath in the time that you could allow, or what, what was... How did that decision? Because I mean, playing with meter yeah. is something we all do, but how did you strike that yeah, inspiration? It was kind of an experiment, but the main connection with this dance, yeah. Kuyaviak, that was just uh, keep the quarter note okay. uh, way of dancing, because it's based on quarter notes. So I put the quarter notes <coughs> uh, in, in snare drum. So I tried different odd meters, but 4-4 four, four was the best. Yeah, very nicely mm -hmm. done, beautiful. And I'm also wondering, since these are inspired by dance, can you envision dancers dancing to your arrangements? In other words, maybe reverse engineering the music and having a dance choreo choreographed to these adaptations. That would give it another element, another kind of uh, connection to the audience and then back to the tradition, perhaps. Yeah, maybe it will be next step, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. I mean, I took a lot of notes on the music itself, but um, these are just my general impressions, and I'm really proud of you as a composer and a player, and 
and your, 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 your music is wonderful, and it just speaks for itself. So thank you for the opportunity to be on Thank you, panel. Jerry. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> Congratulations, Sebastian. Thank you. Yeah, I agree with um, Jerry, um, just as far as, yeah, drummers can, drummers can write songs. <laughs> yeah, thank you for um, supporting, you know, that notion. Um, I had a couple of questions, though, that I, I'm just a little unclear on a few things. The, so are the names of the pieces um, the last, so you, you presented four of the five, right? Yeah, I recorded five, yeah, but uh, it was time for four pieces only. Yeah. Okay. So you only recorded, you mean there's only time for four today, but you recorded four five? Four today, I recorded okay. five, five. So six, which one, yeah. we missed, um, which one, the last one? Krakow, Krakow, uh, It's called Zydek Blaszane uh, Mordy, but it was inspired by inspired by Krakowiak. Okay. So Blaszane Mordy is traditional uh, team from 19th century. So this is the one that we missed, that we did not hear. Oh, right? we didn't see dance, I think, yeah, I miss. Okay, which piece of yours, the name of the composition did you not play? I'm just trying to, uh, it's completely different. It's not in my presentation. So I play four tunes today. I know. I was just. Yeah. But you listed five on the first page, right? No, it five. It was five national dances, which I was inspired by. Okay. So it was. I thought the titles, first page yeah. said those were your compositions. So that's that's why I'm confused. Ah, it was inspired by. Uh, po yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I guess I'm still confused, but that's okay. <laughs> Let me just move on. Um, yeah, I agree also with Jerry. It would have been cool to actually see some dancing with your pieces. That would have been a really cool mm. element yeah. to add you know, t to this. Um, and uh, so when you started also describing the characteristics of all of uh, the, the dances that you said, you said it ended up sounding like most of them are in three, four, and you said in a minor key, um, the 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 third piece you played. Once you said that it was in a major key, uh, the, the the example that you uh, you pl that you played was in a major key. So I was a little confused there because you had said it was in a minor key. It was um, minor. It was minor. Maybe sounds like major. Or maybe I had the wrong root in my head. Okay, sounded like major to me. Okay. Um, also, um, I just kind of wanted to know where you see um, this going. Like, what can you, what do you plan to do, you know, with this as far as development? Like, uh, mm. you no, know, I'm going to record five more tunes. Mm -hmm. Just record album with Polish traditional music, combined with my own experience. Mm -hmm. Release album and. You really see, probably play on some festivals. Okay. With some small group, maybe not 19 people like in my project here, but. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Look forward to hearing that. Um, so, do you feel like um, you, did you learn anything like new from your, you know, your culture, your history? Like, did it enlighten you and? in any areas that you, you know, things you didn't know already, like what, what would those things be? You know, it was like, I was kind of ignorant, like 27 years, uh, I actually didn't listen my my own music from my country, but it was like this music was all the time with me. I grew up there, so it was all the time part of my life. So when I make, start to make some research, uh, I discover and uh, I was awake like this music is really deeper than I thought before. And it's kind of strong connection anyway. Do you feel like that discovery changed something about you personally or? Maybe. Or, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Um, and so the other question I have is just about the drumming in, in general, since you are you know, a drummer. Yeah. Um, do you feel like you stretched yourself on this? I mean, I didn't hear all of it like Jerry did, you know, so with what you know, I just heard, you know, that's what the curiosity came to me. Like, how did you stretch your own playing and your own artistry on the drum, on the drum kit? I can see maybe as far as the composing for sure, you know, but as, as a drummer, did you dig in a little differently or, you know? You mean in this year, like? Yeah, in this project, uh -huh. like, did you stretch yourself as a drummer? Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, it's all the time was about looking some new new sounds, new way mm -hmm. of playing in my composition. So I think, yeah, I I was going somewhere, probably yes. I don't know. <laughs> okay, no, because I just think that's an important thing when you do a whole project. Uh, especially now that you're going to do five more songs to try to stretch yourself, you know, just because you, you mentioned the six, eight and the, you know, the, the Danilo's influence mm -hmm. on that, mm -hmm. but that particular six, eight or that part of the song still had kind of the, the backbeat six, eight. So that, yeah. you know what I mean? So I'm, I was just trying to see how, you know, maybe you, uh, opened up some new areas for yourself. Um, so maybe with the, the rest of the record, you can even stretch, stretch yourself more as yeah. a drummer, you know? So yeah, that's, that's, that's it. Congratulations. Thank you. On your project. And I can't, I, I'm looking forward to hearing the rest of it. Thank you. Okay. Sebastian. Um, Blending the the traditional and the contemporary, um, I think this is very successful. A very good direction. It seems to be bringing out some some new sounds for you. Um, I have some questions, though. Well, first a comment um, from the examples that you played. Um, I just wrote down a couple of words. Uh, there was in the original in the source material. I found this sense of melancholy in the music, um, a sense of elegance, and nostalgia. And I compliment you because in your adaptation and your bringing this forward into a more contemporary form, you didn't leave those things out. I still felt those. Things. There was melancholy, there was no nostalgia, and there was definitely elegance. So, bravo. Um, Thank you. I wish I knew more about the, that particular region in Poland. Um, the history, you know, the influences. Mm -hmm. um, I heard in the instrumental music, the source material, I heard um, influences from Western Europe, but I love the way that you use the um, upper register instruments, the flute in particular, and the voices, but that was a different influence. Um, I wonder where the vocal influences, the ornaments, the in inflection of the voice that you also had in the, in the treble instruments. Mm. Uh, can you tell me, or can you talk a little bit about yeah. that sound? That, that sound, I think just I composed these songs uh, for particular persons. So in the first song, that's, that was Erini Tornesaki for Greece. So I also use her background music and she put her experience in my song. And another example, there was Nyoni from Madagascar. So she also be herself. It was like connection. What I wrote and what they bring to, the, to my product, you know. Mm -hmm. How did you make that decision to use that? Well, I mean, it was, it was 
something that wasn't Western in the way that yeah, they it was kind of experimental. I wanted to use people who, who are here in the program in the Berkeley mm -hmm. to make better connection with my music and use people from here. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very nice. Thank you so much. Congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, congratulations, Sebastian. Uh, it was a pleasure working with you this semester. And uh, when you first came to me and said, I want my project to be a mix of Polish folk dance and hip hop, I was like, yeah, bring it on. I never heard anything like that. So congratulations. I think you created your own soundscape very much mm -hmm. by blending those two influences. Um, <clears throat> I also think you did a really good job uh, with the speech. I know the language is a challenge for you to, to uh, present in English. And uh, a couple of times I was a little worried because um, you came to me and showed me a, a slide and said, Mazurka. <laughs> and I said, well, you got to say something more than that. <laughs> but it's, so you did great. <laughs> um, yeah, you created your own soundscape. Um, what I'd like to hear, have heard you present more about is I think is your influence from Chris Dave and, and other um, mm. people in the field of hip hop um, in the African diaspora, so to speak. Because yeah. it would be interesting to hear a little bit more about that, um, how you, uh, what you've learned from them and how you approach your drumming. So I think that would be, um, you know, make more of a balanced presentation that way. Um, and also, what do you think of doing next? with this project, um, we talked about having you present this in different uh, venue, different situations, different mm -hmm. places. Do you have any idea of, of that? Yeah, I think, yeah, finish album and try to play concert with that. Probably there is a lot of folk festivals I can present there, also, also in jazz festivals around. Yeah, well, um, I think you should present it for for you know younger people, um, and, and it could be anywhere on the planet. But it maybe it's especially in Poland, mm -hmm. that would inspire younger musicians, the sort of the upcoming generation after mm -hmm. you, to to look at their their home country as music. Like you were saying, you didn't listen or, or didn't appreciate it until. 27 years later, um, and it's, that resonated with me because I didn't really appreciate, well, not I shouldn't say that, but um, I don't think I really appreciated how big a part of my musicianship, Swedish folk music, was until I came here to the US. Then I started mm -hmm. listening more to it. It's like the distance made me listen more to it and appreciate it more. So I, I think you should um, use the project for that purpose also, to inspire us others. Yeah. Um, yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sebastian, um, congratulations. Thank you. Um, one, one of the, the things I was surprised about was to hear your compositions. I, I, have, I don't think I've heard much of you writing in this year. And I think that was, that was really enlightening for me. To, um, you know, we, we are facing like a difficult time right now because we, we have so many influences and, and I think one of the most important, important cultural changes in the 20th century f is the rise of identity as a fun fundamental value. Yeah. And I think when I, when I th these are questions I'm gonna pose in the air. I want to be encouraging, supportive of what the direction you have chosen and also very, uh, you know, if you have a question after I make this remark, please let's talk privately in a coffee or whatever you want. You know, I'm, I'm available. But I want you to take this because I'm a, a firm believer of this direction of, of global mm -hmm. jazz. I believe the, 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 the cultural transformation that we need is, is global jazz is giving wonderful platform for relationships mm -hmm. that have not been thought of. And the fact of creating uh, equal value and relationships, uh, you know, equality and all of that in, 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 in a possibility of, of music, music as a possibility, uh, you know. Um, 
to me, this project feels more like uh, the questions that Guillermo del Toro posed the other day in Mexico. And he was being challenged with this new movie that he did, the one that, that won all these prizes, The Shape of Water. And he went back home. And people asked him, where is Mexico here? I don't hear Mexico. Can you describe it? And he said, where is the Mexico in this project? And he said, it's me. I am from Mexico. You know? So my advice would be, because I had a hard time hearing the relationships between the, the, uh, the folk material that you presented and the music. My ears, when I close my eyes, hearing this, this thing I was reading. You know, so what I would recommend you doing impressions of Poland. It's not really like, okay, this is a folk, I'm mixing this with this. I would, I would, for example, when you said the, the Polonese is ching, 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 and you went really quick at it, you missed the most important part for me is the cadence of that rhythm. Ching, 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 three, ching, 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 boom. And that's a dance form mm -hmm. that we have in Latin America, by the way, too. So what I'm, what I'm inviting you, and I think you, you really are um, a fantastic drummer and, and so great to hear that you're composing also and you want to go this way. Um, look, sometimes we look at a backbeat as a way of hiding to, to make something appear that is not. So... I would, I would recommend, you have so much to give to, you have embraced a direction here. I would encourage you to really re-examine it in a, in a, in a way, um, like the other day, the Poland was playing against, uh, what was the game? Colombia. Colombia, yeah. But, <laughs> but yes, that's okay. But what I would recommend really deeply is like, see if you can imagine where would you like to be in 20 years? And then place this work, piece of work that you're going for, and see if you've seen yourself that is gonna retain the promise of today in the next 20 years. That's what I would encourage you to do. Thank you for this, this beautiful music you presented. Thank Sebastian. You so